Aloha mai kako. Can everyone hear me? All right. Um. Le hono ko hauike aloha ona hulu kupu una he he ika pula aloha kui kamana kani kale o o kamanu valo ika ilikai. Vehe o ke ala ho ia ke ala o ka mauli Pa a ka pai pai o ke au mala mala ma Ho o la ka loko ai no o o ka mali no O Ruth aloa ko u i noa o mauna a wa ke a ku u mauna O kona ku u aina kupuna o ka loko ku u loko O kona kai malino kuu kai, aloha mai kako. My name, oh, I'm actually going to change that right now. My name is Loke. Can everybody say Loke? Loke. All right, it ain't Loki. That ain't right. If you say it that way, you don't get to say my name. You got to say it the right way. If you're going to operate this in, in our native spaces, you got to learn how to speak our language. And I was kind of, I was kind of sad because somebody wanted to scream something out like, um, speak our language. We are speaking our language. How many native speakers do we have in this room? Anybody speak another language of native peoples? Native peoples in this room? Okay, cool. I see you and I hear you. I see you and I hear you. So what I just gave you was an introduction. I gave you an introduction of who I am and where I come from. I called for my mountain, Mauna Awakia. Uh, I called for the ancestral district of my grandmother, which is Kona. I'm a kia'i loko, a fish pond guardian. I sing to fish, I chant to fish, I love to eat fish as well. Um, and my fish pond is koloko. And, uh, and I called for the traditional name of my ocean. And it's the kona kai malino, the peaceful, peaceful seas, which is very, very different uh, from the other sides of the island. Uh, before I go any further, um, I would like to thank uh, Aunt Audrey for being here tonight. And uh, I would like to thank Aunt Deb for the opening um, and the other individuals who greeted us. Um, to the Spokane tribes, Spokane tribes for allowing me entry, um, and to beautiful and wonderful Melody for um, being so welcoming in receiving the waters of my fish pond, um, and to the lands uh, for receiving the prayers that I had casted forth. So, I gotta be upfront with you guys. I never prepare a speech. I have rough notes. You guys invited a keynote that just kind of spit it out on a piece of paper before I walked up here. And so what did I rely on? I relied on prayer. Prayer brought me here tonight. Ancestor brought me here tonight. Creator brought me here tonight. And that is why I am here. And I thank Veterans for Peace for bringing me here tonight. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm what you call wild Aina. Can everybody say Aina? Aina. So everybody, now I want you to just get like nitty gritty. Like I know you guys know how to get down in them trenches. I want you to say like Aina, like bite the earth, Aina. All right, that's how you say Aina. So I'm a little bit of wild Aina. I can't be caged. I, I will break the cage. I'm all about breaking cages. We don't need to be caged anymore. We don't need to be silenced. It is a time where we need to speak. We need to speak hard truths. Things have to be said. And so what you're going to get tonight, I have no idea. I'm just going to let ancestors come through. You may love it. I hope you do. You may not want to hear any of it. Uh, I can't help you. Uh, at any point in my presentation, you are welcome to leave. You don't need to like anything I say, but I hope you like some of it. I hope you like some of it, because I liked what I heard uh, when I was sitting in the audience, when I got to attend some sessions, when I got to connect one-on-one -on -one with some of the vets that are here and their family members. So, let's get started. Where should we start, ancestors? Let's start with being indigenous. Let's start with being that. What does that mean? And it means different things to different people. Or being a person of color, being a minority. Um, and what, is my, what do I say? What do I say? I say thank you to the Okinawans. Thank you. I have allies there. I have accomplices. I love Hinokobe. I honor your elders. I honor you and I thank you. And to the Spokane tribes um, for allowing me entry and for dealing with the uranium issues that are being depleted in our fields out in Hawaii. I thank you and I see you and I hear you and I hear about the cancers that your ancestors, your elders right now are facing. I hear about that, those water issues. I'm thinking of all the people, the people out in Jeju, out in Korea. I'm thinking about my other friends in Guahan and what we know as Guam, where the military is expanding. And so I'm not a vet. 
But a lot of people say, are you a vet? I'm like, I'm not a vet. I'm like, oh man, am I the only not vet here? Um, I'm not a vet, but I have elders who have served. And I'm trying to stop every generation below me and beside me from entering. I don't want them there. Yeah. And so even though I don't have, I don't have, I don't have that experience, I was thinking, okay, what, am I, what, what brings us together? What brings us together? And what brings us together is peace. That shared goal alone is powerful. It is so powerful. The shared value of love of love, like just saying that word, I can feel it in the room, things are shifting. Just saying the word alone, saying the word love is allowing you to hear me better. So I try and weave it throughout all my presentations as much as I can. I'm gonna keep saying it because I need your heart to open. Because we are running out of time and our little ones are being born and they're waiting to be born in the stars with the ancestors and they're counting on every single one of us. And I said it if you came in our panel, if you have a bad day, have a bad day. If you have a couple of bad days, have a couple of bad days, but you don't get to tap out because these babies, they're counting on us. And so go watch Netflix, binge in your beds, but pucker up and get back out there. Get back out there because it is urgent, urgent times and we need to save this earth. That is the shared goal. And the only way we're gonna get there is with love. And if you, this is gonna be a harsh truth, if you're not ready to embrace everyone, Prepare to be swallowed and to drown in a sea of love because there will be no space for you to exist otherwise. So make room, folks, make room. Everyone is gonna have to have a place and if you can't adjust to a loving space where people can speak their native language, where people can love their waters, where they can be fully whatever color or background they are without being judged, without being accepted because of those things alone, their physical characteristics, there is no place for you. There is no place for you. And I have a smile on my face because that means that we will create a better world for future generations and that is the only reason why I'm here. So a lot of my elders that I get to work with, my mentors, they're women, they're powerful women. And I have many men too, many really wise men that I look to. So I'm just gonna channel that energy of truth. I'm gonna try my best to do them justice and my family. So I'm gonna take us back to love and I'm gonna allow you entry into a very sp sacred space for me um, and I'm gonna talk about my family. And where, where do my teachings of love come from, of peace? So every choice as a Kanaka Maoli, not an American, I will never be an American, the military held our queen at gunpoint and we have been illegally occupied for over a hundred years and we want our country back. But the reason I'm gonna talk about my family and the reason I'm gonna bring in my grandmother is because she is my pillar of peace. Everything that I know starts with her. When she had pennies in her purse, somehow she made more pennies appear so that I could have candy. My grandmother, on the last days of her being on this earth, she was a prayer woman, she loved prayer. You know who she prayed for in all her pain? She prayed for us in all the pain that her body was experiencing. And I think a lot of us in here might know some of that, what that's like, to watch a loved one suffer or to suffer ourselves. We could pray for ourselves. You know what, she didn't pray for us. She didn't pray for her, she prayed for us. That's where her prayers went. When she knew she was on countdown, she prayed for us. When the family was in turmoil, it was her responsibility to keep us together. And she always found the path to peace. She taught me it's possible. It is possible that the path does exist. And then she also taught me that if you can't see it, if you can't find it, you can create it. And that's powerful, why? Because that leaves us no choice but to act in a peaceful way. We don't have to go to war. We don't have to choose violence. We can choose peace. And that can be the only path that we choose. And so as I'm thinking about my grandma who brought me here and the experiences of my family, what I'm gonna go to now is I'm gonna talk about, and somebody's gonna have to keep time because I'll either go over or I'll go under. Because that's the way spirit moves. I'm not in charge. 
I don't know what I'm saying. I, I kind of know, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to keep going, so just keep receiving me. So as I'm moving on, I'm thinking about when I first sat in the room and I, and I listened to Auntie Deb speak. And she spoke about having that ovarian cancer, right? And she spoke about the waters being polluted. She talked about um, the pesticide issues. And I'm bringing her in in a very honorable, honorable way uh, because she really, really touched me. She really touched me, folks. And I hope she touched you too because it is always an honor to sit to hear the presence of an elder speak. Because what could take this whole room, like 30, 40 folks, to say days or weeks, an elder can say in seconds. That is how powerful their words are. That is how powerful they are. And so I'm thinking of sacred lands, sacred lives. I'm thinking of water, I'm thinking of Auntie Deb, I'm thinking of pollution, I'm thinking of the womb because that is where I'm going. When we're thinking about sacred lands and sacred lives, I'm thinking about future generations. And if we want to have a discussion about our tomorrow and our next generation, we better start looking at how we're treating our women. How are we treating our women? When I first came in, I, I wanted to thank Jerry for, for bringing out, you know, hey, we have this issue in Veterans for Peace. We don't want that to happen. I'm like, yes, that is exactly what we need to be saying. That is exactly it. So how are we treating our women? How are, how are we all treating our women? I, I'm really asking the audience, and you don't need to answer it, but it's something I want you to ponder. Do you respect women? Do you hear them when they speak? When they tell you no, do you hear no? Or did you hear yes? Or did you hear, nah, she's just playing, she's just playing? Like, what did you hear? Are you respecting our women? And the reason is our women are our future generation. They are our walking next seven generations. They are holding those babies. They are holding those babies and their reproductive cycles are very crucial. They're very critical to that. Women can do something no one else can do. They can reproduce and that's powerful. Women hold a lot of power. They're powerful for that reason. And guess what, men? You have a powerful role too in being the warriors. And that's what I hear. I hear that there are a lot of warriors in this room, a lot of warriors of love, a lot of warriors for peace. And you play a powerful role in keeping their womb safe, in loving them, in keeping them safe, in respecting them, in hearing them, in serving them. And in talking about our women and the next seven generations, because that's what they are. They are walking next seven generations. And in speaking of this high role that men play in not only the creation, but in also the honoring of them and the caring of them, we're getting down to land. Because every single breath that we breathe, our air, every single ounce drop of water that we drink, the food that we're consuming, whether it's coming from the ocean or whether it's coming from the land, is going into our bodies. And it's going into the bodies of women who are reproducing and creating our next generation. And so what does this all mean? What does this all mean? When I sit in many Native circles, I, always, I often hear this saying, and, and you've probably heard something like it too, um, if you sat in these circles, but they say, you know, our women will never be respected um, until our men learn how to respect the earth. And a good way to learn how to respect the earth is to respect the women, to start there, because they are teachers. How many women do we have in this room? If you can raise your hand, how many women do we have? All around you, look around, gentlemen. These are great, great, wise teachers that we have sitting in here because mothers do so much. How many of us in here love their moms or love their grandmother or an auntie? Those are, those are also mothers in our culture. They are also mothers. And they play powerful, powerful roles in raising us. You spend nine months with them, whether or not you like it. Whether or not you like them when you come out, you had to have spent nine months with them. Minimally, that's, that's like, you know, up to there, maybe a little less, who knows. But you're spending that time with them. You're spending that time in their womb. And so honoring, honoring our women and honoring our earth are synonymous. And so standing with indigenous people, standing with Standing Rock, standing with the Okinawans at Hinoko Bay, standing with Chamorros out in Guahan, standing for Black Lives Matter, African Americans, everything, all of, those, all of those voices that are being silenced or attempted to be silenced, they all matter. And we all need to step it up, including myself, including myself. So I see a lot of faces, I don't know how this is going. 
could be going good, it could not be going anywhere, but I'm the keynote and I got my rough, rough notes here. And so I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of Mauna Kale. I have to talk about Mauna Kale. I have to, yeah. I'm, and, and I don't know, how many of us have kind of heard about what's going on back home in Hawaii, in my home Hawaii, with Mauna Kea? Yeah. And so Mauna Kea right now, there are probably hundreds, sometimes there's thousands of people that are sitting at an access road that allows you up to this mountain on the biggest island, the largest island um, in my homelands. And at, and at the top of our mountain, on the northern uh, plateau, they actually, uh, they want to build, they meaning astronomers, um, want to build uh, a telescope, a very large telescope. Uh, they, they call it the 30, 30 meter telescope and they want to build it. They want to build it up there. Um, and so we've been saying no and we've been saying no to building on our mountain uh, ever since the first telescope went up back in the 70s. Um, and why, why have we been saying no? Because the land is our elder. And it's not just us, for many, many native peoples, the land is literally our elder. And so as an elder, as a sibling, uh, we have no choice but to keep our family safe. And I think this room knows a lot about family, whether you're referring to the relationships you folks have made through your service or through that which you're actually born into. I think all of us can have some relationship or understanding of family and what that looks like when you are committed, when everybody goes home at the end of the day. Everyone eats, even if there ain't much food. Everybody's getting a sip of the last drop of water. So we, my family, the Mauna Kea Ohana, uh, made up of people of all backgrounds, of all likings, many Hawaiians, many Kanaka Maoli are at that mountain right now, um, and they're trying to keep safe our mountain. So we've blocked the road. We've blocked the road and there's been many handfuls that have been staying there. They've been there for over 30 days blocking the road. And so on the first few days there, why am I telling you this? I have to contextualize it. I'm telling you this because land is our elder. This mountain is our genesis point. It is where we come from. It is where we descend. Um, it, it, it belongs to our future generations. It is our largest watershed. And so when I'm talking about reproduction, I'm talking about family. Um, there's no better place to take you but to what's happening right now in Hawaii. And the military does have a role in this, military behaviors. And so we've been sitting there. This is not the first time we've been there. We were there in 2015. We stayed there for over a year. We've done our diligence. Uh, our elders have gone through court cases trying to hold the government accountable. We all know, hey, that doesn't always work. Be prepared to lose, but try anyway. Give it all you got. And when you gotta cry, you go cry, but then you pick yourself back up. Why? Because the next generation is counting on you. You don't have a choice. You have to continue to stand. Recently, there, the government decided, hey, this, this, this astronomy company, they can go up. They've done all of these things that they were supposed to do. We heard your folks' complaints. We tried our best to minimize our impacts. Um, but hey, they're gonna go up anyway. And so what did we say? We are saying enough is enough. Enough has been taken from us. Far too much has been taken and we're not gonna allow any more taking. We're not gonna allow any more taking. <laughs> and so I'm a Kia'i, I'm a guardian. That's what we are and my hope is like, I bet you every single person in this room could be a, an excellent guardian because a guardian has honor. A guardian is noble. A guardian knows commitment. A guardian is dedicated, dedicated to protection and love. And so I'm a kia'i, a kia'i of this mountain. And on the, we have a kupuna line, and a kupuna line is an elder line. And an elder line has been sitting on this road, stopping law enforcement from coming up and arresting them. And they are doing a damn good job because it is hot up there. It is blistering hot, and it also gets rigidly cold. It is very, very cold on the mountain. Um, and, and access to supplies and whatnot is limited. It's limited. It's pretty much like camping, never ending camping. You're just camping all the time. And so I'm going to thank these elders because they've been sitting there and they've been holding the ceremony. And that is our front line. 
that is what it looks like now as an indigenous person. That is what it has looked like for a very long time. But mass media is allowing us to see these things in greater clarity. It looks like elders sitting in the middle of a road 24 seven to keep safe a sacred mountain that provides water for a whole island that falls on the responsibility of the state of Hawaii to do and the state is failing us. And so when governments fail, the people must act. And so we are acting. We are and we have been. And so things have happened. It started with the 30, maybe 27, 30 on the first night where they set up their camp. It grew, you know, you see 100, 200, uh, you see several hundred and now you're seeing several thousands. On those first couple of days when the elders were out on the line, um, the state officers were trying their best to be very, very kind, taking them away one by one. But there's actually like, there's no real way to do that in a right way. You have elders in wheelchairs. How do you arrest someone for protecting water, for protecting their ancestor in a wheelchair? How do we do that? Why have we come to this? Why have we allowed this to happen? That is a good question. So they're taking them away one by one. Over 30 are arrested. Next thing you know, they're telling us, hey, you guys, we have to start moving faster. You guys are getting in the way. Okay, and I was up there in the beginning. Let me go. Next thing you say, I, I'll be, what do I say? I'm a frontliner. I'm always trying to figure out what that means. And, and at that time, in that moment, when they said we need to start moving faster, that meant keep the elder safe. Keep that elder safe, that elder that is sitting on that line. And I said, I'll be in the front line in front of the elders. I'll be in the front line. Scan the crowd and find the other female warriors that are ready to stand to keep safe the mountain and keep safe our actual elders on that line. We're going around, we're going around, and, and for years now, the state of Hawaii has been passing legislation to allow our officers to become more and more armed, to use more and more violent methods on us if they should have to arrest us, because that's how big of a pain in the ass we are. Like, I'm sorry, government, indigenous people will not go away. We're not fading away, we are growing, and we're not planning on leaving. And so one of the things that we've been preparing for is the LRAD, this sound machine that they have. And, what do we, and the instantly, we're standing in a line. We don't know what's going to happen. We knew we would have to do something at some point, uh, but we didn't know what that was going to be. And at that time, it meant lock arms and get ready, folks. Get ready to lock as hard as you can and to be ripped apart at any at all costs to keep your elders safe. Keep them safe. And you know what your duty is? Your duty is to follow kapualoka. That is peaceful and nonviolent interaction. So if you can't respond with nothing less than peace and love to somebody who is being violent to you, step aside. Because one cannot risk everyone. If you are a danger to yourself, if you are a, da if you are a danger to yourself, you are a danger to the collective. So it requires you to be in the most disciplined state of aloha. So we're locked arms. We're getting ready, we're chanting, we're praying. We have people taking care of us. You folks need water, does anybody need sunscreen? Everybody's drinking from the water, locking arms. People are putting sunscreen on. You will see beautiful acts of love happening every moment. That is what the cup of aloha requires and that is what is still happening. Next thing you know, people are passing out earbuds. Put this in your ear, this won't help you really. It'll kind of cover the sound a little bit, but be prepared for anything. We don't know how this is gonna feel. The sheriffs start walking out. There's a long road in front of us and we're locked arms. The sheriffs and their officers start to line the road, full riot gear. Full riot gear, batons, tear gas. The next thing you know, the van is parked, the paddy's ready to pick us up. But the line behind me is growing. The line behind me is growing. Officer walks out, stops right where this cameraman is, puts the LRAD down. Right there. And I'm thinking, God damn, I hope my mom is not watching this video. I hope my mom is not watching this video. But they do, they watch it. Because she worries. She worries, all our mothers worry about us. 
our parents. And I, and, I, and I also thought, man, I hope my nephew, I hope my nephew who is seven, that's what I was thinking. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm a demilitarization activist. You better not be afraid. You always put your life on the line when you're speaking for peace and justice. That's the bottom line. And when you're brown and you're outspoken and you're queer, guess what? Your target is growing. Yeah. I was standing there locking arms thinking, God, please, please, mom, please don't be watching this. I was thinking, oh, my God, what am I going to tell my nephew? He asked me, Auntie, do you want to play Battleship? I was like, my life is Battleship. I feel like I'm always trying to keep all my boats afloat. So the day goes on. Negotiations are made. Negotiations are made. We're sitting there. We're tired. Oh, this machine's out there. I don't know if they're going to use it on us. Hey, if so, you know, and we're like whispering, if, if something's going to happen, breathe through your mouth, breathe through your mouth, use the scarf, cover your nose with the scarf, don't keep your eyes closed as much as possible, take short breaths, get to the sideline. Who's strong? Who's strong in the line? Your job, your job is to pull them out. Pull them out when you see people going down. So I feel like, I haven't been a vet, but I feel like I kind of know what it's like to be in war. That's a war zone out there. That is a war zone. And being a demilitarization activist, on top of standing against this huge corporation that is supported by this illegal government, I'm thinking, oh my God, what are the chances of getting out of this? So my goal, my ultimate goal, I'm sorry, Mom. My goal whenever I go into any movement is to stay alive. Yeah, I want clean water. Yeah, I don't want that telescope on our mountain. I want to demilitarize our Hawaii. But really what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to stay alive. So when I'm talking about these military tactics, I feel like there is a war zone back home and it is a lot calmer now. The armed forces are overwhelmed. Our numbers have grown to such a mass that law enforcement can't actually handle us. The state has no idea what to do with us. Jason Momoa has been a big supporter and he's helped us significantly. He has and he always has. And the largest military base, Pohakuloa, which is on my shirt, they're right across the street. They're within five minutes. The state, our governor, let me honor our governor correctly, Governor David Ige, the University of Hawaii, President David Lassner, and our state uh, police officer for the environment, uh, she's also the president, Suzanne Case. I love to honor people. We honor the brilliant, and we should also honor those who have betrayed us. Let future generations remember their names. They are eager to deploy the military on us, or the National Guard if they should have to. So they're always trying to finagle a way to get folks out, because this military base, which is 133,000 acres located on our island, used for live fire training, from folks all over the world, Florida, Guahan, that fly there to practice war games in our backyard, I'm sure they're itching to come and help. Because a lot of us getting out of the way for this mountain would mean a lot of us out of the way for the military. Because we're not stopping. We can't stop. We have to keep going. We have to have to keep going. And so where are we now? Right now, a lot of the people that I love and I hold close, uh, they're out there on that mountain. They are out there, um, and they're holding a very important place um, in holding that space, and a lot of them are elders. Um, a lot of them are people of the ceremony, people who, who have never forgotten, and people who are remembering the sacredness of the earth, of Papa Earth, the womb of the earth, the waters of this earth, um, all of our waters. Um, and I wanna thank Jerry and Helen um, and Anne for coming out because the Veterans for Peace came up with their flag and I had the honor of walking with Jerry as he went up to our elder council and presented the Veterans for Peace flag. And I wanna honor that. Yeah. I wanna honor you folks because I don't know what you've been through and I don't need to know because grandma taught me I can instantly love you and so I'm choosing to love you. I'm honestly choosing to love every single one of you. And if every single one of us just made that choice that easy, just saying, I'm gonna love you regardless of how much you screw me or piss me off, or like, I'm gonna love you regardless of how great of a person you are, imagine how much more beautiful this world would be. What if we all just chose that? What if that was the only option? Here's a better question. 
what if we made that the only option? Right? And the only way we're going to get there is not only through choosing love, but through re respecting our women, respecting and honoring our women. And respecting them means respecting the womb and protecting the elements, keeping the elements safe. Because when we keep safe the elements, we keep safe the women. When we keep safe the women, we keep safe the elements. And we have a future generation, folks. And we not only have one, we're going to have a beautiful future generation. And so a more beautiful world is not a distant world. It's a world that we live today. Peace is not a value that we talk about. It's not something that we only dream up, but it's something that we actionize right now, every single moment, every single heartbeat. Every single heartbeat, lacing it with love, bombarding each other with beauty, doing small acts of kindness that could save lives. And so now I'm going to bring it back to grandma. Yeah, she was so special to me. She was so, so special. And so, let us teach our young men how to respect our women, how to love them, how to hold them, how to hear them, when they want to be held and how they want to be touched, to make space for the women and to let the women lead. And for our young women, let us teach them to be loud and have boundaries, because boundaries are good. Yeah, that's what's going to keep them safe. And let us start. So I'm going to, I, I can't go anywhere and not leave you with homework or, yeah. or a commitment or a commitment. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I was thinking, okay, there's various, so there's various levels that this can be taken. Um, and I'm going to say this is, a, this is, this is a, a challenge. I don't like challenge. I don't like being challenged because then I revolt. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that. It ain't me. You don't tell me what to do. So I don't like challenge. Um, but this is a call to action. And should you choose to rise to it, you choose on your own. So it's a request. I never tell you anything. I speak, and whether or not you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. I don't need to be liked. Um, I'm going to go home and farm. I'm going to grow food for the people. I'm going to keep my water safe. I'm going to get ready for the next generation. But to Veterans for Peace before, or maybe while, even while you're going out into your communities, into the many places that you folks have chapters, clean your house. Clean your house up. When a, when a group comes up to speak in their language and to share, you respect them. Yes. Clean up your house. Teach your members how to respect indigenous peoples. Create an indigenous council or a native council, some kind of council to advise you and give you honest correction and listen to them. They are not your tokens. They are not decorations on the walls. Uh, no, 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 no. Go decorate your Christmas tree. I don't know, go draw. Do whatever you got to do. But that's not what we are. Put us in meaningful places uh, where we can make meaningful change and support us. And don't be afraid because it will be beautiful. And if we want to get to that more beautiful world, we're going to have to let brown people and indigenous people lead us in getting us there. They're a part of it, and they need to be seen because they got important stuff to say. More than important, they have thousands of years of knowledge flowing through their veins, and that will save you. That can help to save this world, help to save your family. So clean your house up. And this is, and anything I say, I do myself. I'm the president of an organization. I'm the po'o, the head of a hui a grassroots group that takes care of a pond, and everything I tell them, I hold myself to. So everything I'm telling you, I hold myself to. I will never tell you something that I cannot do. Never. Know how to make a commitment. Easy. For the individuals, uh, be brave. Be brave. I know you folks already know how to be brave. But not only be brave, put your ears on the ground. That's what Uncle Jim said. Remind them. I said, okay, Uncle Jim. He's one of my mentors. He said, remind them there are indigenous people where they come from and put your ears to the ground so it's not only the big issues, the sexy issues, the ones that are getting attention, but it's the ones that are happening in your own backyards, to your own waters, to your own lands. If you're in Spokane, they need a lot of help here too. Help the tribes here. Uh, wherever you go, wherever you're going, when you're going back home, help them, help them, help them. Um, and help means don't stand on us. Please, 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 please. I'm always trying to be you know, in shape as a farmer. 
Um, but please, yeah, please don't stand on us. Uh, also, don't stand in front of me. The good thing is I wear boots, so that's really not a problem. Um, don't stand on us. Don't stand in front of us. Um, listen. Listen for very, listen for a long time. Uh, learn how to ask a question. Don't ask stupid questions. Do your homework. Do your homework. And it's easy. It's easy. And you know how you do that? You listen. You listen, and you will find the people uh, in the room who know the most, who you can learn from. And that is a great honor. It is a great honor to be a staff, to support someone when they walk. That is a great, great honor. So get on the ground when you go home, if you're not already active. Meet your indigenous peoples, the native peoples, the people of color, the people who need help. Help them start there. Clean the organization up. Teach people how to behave, how to be respectful, how to be mindful, how to make space, how to learn. When, when you can learn when silence is space, you've come a long way. If you hear emptiness, what sounds as emptiness in a conversation, sometimes that space is occupied by spirit. And when you can learn how to identify that space and let that space exist and still be heard, you've come a long way. And for the members, for the individuals. I have a right now ask, and then I'm gonna leave you with a tomorrow ask, and you can take that tomorrow ask, and you can multiply it, or you can let it, you can let it stop there. My hope is that you're gonna let it multiply. So my right now ask is for every single one of us to think a beautiful thought. Every single one of us think a beautiful thought. Think of something beautiful. Think of someone that you love. Think of a water that you love. Think of a person. Think of something beautiful that has happened to you, someone who has shaped you, a place you have been, a moment that you remember since childhood something delicious that you ate. Think of a beautiful thought. Think of a beautiful thought. And try and make it meaningful, though. Try and make it meaningful. Um, we are bombarded by so much violence in this world that we will have to make an active and honest effort to be bombarded by beauty. And that requires a courage to dream a courage to remember to see, a vulnerability that allows us to feel, um, and to do things when everyone is looking to do the right thing, and to do the right thing when there are thousands that will do the wrong thing. And so in dreaming a beautiful world, coming tomorrow, do something kind for someone every single day. I feel like that's a small ask. And someone doesn't actually have to be a human. Give, the, give a tree a compliment. Pick a flower for a stranger. Uh, buy a cup of coffee for the next person. Um, if, you, if you're the person that doesn't have the money, which is sometimes me, to, to buy the coffee, and you're getting the coffee, leave a post-it that says thank you for that coffee. Yeah. There's many ways to make a difference, and I feel like that's, that's where the more peaceful world happens. That's where the building is. Um, I am honored, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be here tonight uh, to meet many people and to hear the stories uh, because you give me courage. Yeah, you give me courage. Deidre, you gave me courage. Yeah, you gave me courage. I didn't get to hear everyone's story, um, but I'm so, so, so thankful to all of you for choosing peace. Um, I'm thankful for you to have the courage to acknowledge what has been done and what continues to be done and then to say, I want to make a difference. Because that's where the difference starts in the acknowledgement of, hey, I want to be a part of something better. And I'm going to dream of that more beautiful world. Um, so anyway, I, don't, I feel like I've gone on for far too long. Um, but support each other, love each other. Uh, be kind, be kind, be kind. And if I've offended you, I don't really know if I'm sorry. I feel like everything I said was okay. But if I offended you, I'd like to know why. And you can please come up to me and tell me. Usually I apologize, but I'm not going to do that this time. Because I'm, I'm going to embrace my indigeneity. My name is Loke. I'm no longer choosing uh, my English name. And now when I go by my Kanaka name. And in that, I embrace spirit. And I leave you with a message of love. Love your women. Um, respect them. Love the waters of the earth that is intimately connected to the womb of the earth. And if we want to talk about peace in a future, every single act and action and thought that we do starts now. Um, so dream of a more beautiful world. 
a peaceful world is not distant. Uh, it is one we live today. Uh, it is one our children will see sooner than tomorrow. Uh, it'll leave no one astray. Thank you for having me.